Okay, so that entire, when it was cracked open, that entire uh, area in there was uh, filled. When I say filled, there, were, there was a lot of oil in there. Um, and this seal that is right here, right now it's down there. The old seal is quite worn. In fact, you could see the gap. You could see the gap that had developed between the seal and the crankcase. Or, sorry, the crankshaft. Um, so we put a ready sleeve on there. You can see a sleeve, which increases the diameter by about 20 thousandths. And then we have a new seal on there. That's the Taiwan one that we talked about. And uh, we're going to put that on with a new bell housing gasket here. And I'm going to use the existing clutch disc because it measures 8 millimeters. And all the literature says 7 millimeters is the minimum. So it's got a little wear, but it's still good. Put that together, hopefully it'll not leak and it'll shift just fine. See the thickness of the uh, clutch disc is uh, over 8 millimeters, 7 being the minimum spec. Interestingly, interestingly, the pressure plate has stamped on it August 1994. And if you look at that, you get a 94. So it looks like probably the last time it was, or one of the last times it was seriously driven, at least registered, is when they changed the clutch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and replace this seal on the input shaft you see the see the play on it right there if you look at the new seal i got this from uh pure side motors in huntington beach or fountain valley if you look at the new seal the play isn't much different but the but the difference is it's a six dollar seal the difference is that this seal is pretty much hard it's, it's like not pliable anymore and a new seal which is probably 20 years old a new seal is, is very soft and pliable so we can't can't go wrong by replacing it Okay, so we replaced that seal, and uh, as expected or, or felt from the outside, it is the old seal, probably at least 20 years old, is just hard plastic at this point. In fact, you can see when it came out, it just kind of shattered because it's just hard plastic now. So the new one is like a rubbery, almost a soft rubber, so that should help things a little bit. I'm seeing some leakage from the back area here. First thing I'm going to do is replace the seal that's right behind the harmonic balancer. That seal behind the harmonic balancer is a little old looking, so we'll replace it. Well, replacing the seal will probably help, but the root of the problem is a, there should be like a cone-shaped oil deflector right there. So as the oil gets thrown around in that area, um, it, it doesn't go right up against the seal. So it'll probably help, but it, uh, it may still leak a little bit. We'd have to take the entire uh, back housing, rear housing off um, to get to that. So for now, we'll just replace the seal. Okay, this part of the video is just this talk about the sealing. There was a lot of air escaping, cooling air that could have been being pushed through the engine that was going out holes, essentially. So this one was already there, so that was good. That's, that's keeping the air going down. This is the new, or used, new to this car, oil cooler, and that's the folded fin. We look down there, see the fins there? The advantage of that oil cooler, there's three types. There's actually four types. There's an eight plate, there's a 12 plate, which usually these 140 engines have, or there's the folded fin. And the folded fin and the 12 plate, usually this has a 12 plate. The 12 plate is, is, has more plates in it, so you get more cooling. But the folded fin is a better design from a cooling standpoint. It's not as good from, um, I think they went away from that after 61 or 62 because um, it's a lot of small fins and they got clogged up with a lot of use. Well, yours is completely clean now. Um, so that's something you have to watch. But the folded fin that's on here, which is the same size as the 8-plate, is actually the best of all the cooling. You get the best cooling. So that's the, that's the best uh, one that we put on there. Um, another thing was this grommet, this rubber grommet right here on the oil dipstick. That's new because that was uh, missing before. We put on this hasp right down here. I call it a hasp anyway. It goes around the PCV uh, tube that's going out. Um, the biggest was this right here. So this is added on both sides. This is just the back on a, on a normal Corvair. The hot air comes out here and that supplies the, uh, the cabin hot air. Hot air will come out here, but if, if you looked in there, you can see that there's a plate here that's directing the air down through the engine and through the heads rather than right out the side. The cool air was just shooting. I'd say you're losing 40% of your air just shooting out the back of the engine. That's not the case anymore. It's being forced down. So we put that one on that side. And uh, on this side, we put this one, and I just painted them um, the, aluminized, the aluminized high temperature paint. 
it's not very visible, but if you do look there, you can see a little bit of it. So, um, the engine is pretty um, sealed up now from a standpoint of cool air, not shooting out little holes everywhere. And that's pretty important because you'll drop valve seats if you eventually, especially in the 140 engine, if you push it real hard. Okay, the car was hot last night when I left it, ran it probably 15 minutes, and then came in this morning about, I'd say 12 hours later. Looks pretty good. Uh, the seal that we did up here does not seem to be leaking. Um, that's pretty dry down there. That was wet before. Um, let's see. So nothing, nothing is on the ground on the back of the engine. The only spot I see is that one right there. And that looks to be about three drops of oil. And that seems to be coming from the, from the seal area whether it's from the gearbox side or the oil side, not totally sure. It looks like oil, but that's pretty small. Um, seals are put on correctly. It's just the seals um, are always problematic. So time is 9.36. So we'll come back in 20, 30 minutes and see how we're doing. See if it's dripping down the, down the um, transaxle as it was uh, before we did the front crankshaft seal and the uh, little seal coming out of the input shaft. Okay, it's 1046. We'll look an hour later at it. So we got some drips there. That, I believe, if you look down there, is coming from that seal, which we put a new seal on it. Um, but the problem is inside there, as I was saying earlier, inside there is a... Uh, Kind of a cone-shaped baffle like you put on the top of a dog's a dog's head when you don't want it to bite somebody and it deflects the oil off of it so oil gets thrown onto that seal and leaks a little bit that's probably five drops in an hour i suspect we're going to see but i suspect that'll stop once it cools down now we're looking under here We've got one two three four about four drips and they're coming from that area now I did tighten up the tighten up the oil pan there but it's very likely that those seals don't seal perfectly um, either or the two seals that I replaced that they're just not perfect seals so uh, there you go okay it's 1049 about and I just wiped up the little drips from right before so this is kind of a test of once it cools off and it's still warm actually but um, if static if it still leaks um, in a static uh, situation so this is kind of the sum summation of the sealing job that we did so that's after about an hour of just sitting um, and we got a little, one little drip, it looks like there. Um, so in general, and we don't have anything hanging, if you look there, we don't have any oil hanging there. So in general, I would summarize this as a good sealing job for a Corvair. And finally, it's been about two hours since the engine has run. So we'll call this pretty much a cold start video. I'm not even going to pump it, I'm just going to 